So I'm this really lucky person. I get to ride my bicycle when I go places, and that's a great thing. But suppose you have to drive a car. You may run into problems, and you might have very few problems. They're really low, and you might have bad problems way over here on the right. So this is problems getting worse. And this is how likely, this is highly likely you're really going to get this, and this is rare down here. So what we're going to look at is what does a commuter encounter um, if you go out in your car in the real well, the most likely thing that happens, and, and so we show way up here because it's likely, is that you get caught in traffic and you kill some time and you turn on the radio and it's just sort of boring. It's not something that you really wanted to listen to. That's really what most of us experience when we have to drive somewhere. Be perfectly honest. It is possible that you will get to a situation that nobody's in your way, and you turn on the radio and they're playing the Beach Boys Festival, and you're just grooving as you run down the road. It's a wonderful thing, and you're having a ball. It is also possible that you get stuck in lots of traffic, you're sitting there for an hour, you turn on the radio, and they're testing the emergency broadcast system, and they are screaming, ee, out of the radio, and this is no fun at all. But recognize that there's a slight possibility that you're sitting there stuck in traffic listening to the emergency broadcast system and a drunk driver comes running over the top of you and, you know, you get... I'm sorry, you, you could be seriously damaged or you could end up dead. And that is indeed possible. It's not very likely, but it's possible. What do we do about that? We buy cars that have airbags in them, that have crumple zones. We put on our seat belts. If we have kids, we put them in a kid's seat. We take out catastrophic insurance. We pay mothers against drunk driving to try to reduce drunks. We pay engineers to make the roads safer. We put a fair chunk of our transportation budget into something that we do not expect to happen because it's so devastating if it happens. Now, when we start talking to Congress or to what have you about the, the costs of global warming, we have a best estimate. What is the most likely thing? And when we take that problems that go with that best estimate and you put them in an economic model, we are better off if we deal with it than if we pretend it doesn't exist. Now be very clear, this is science, it is not revealed truth. It is indeed possible that we will see smaller or slower changes. Absolutely correct, that could happen. It's also possible we could see larger or faster changes. We simply do not see any way that simply adding CO2 to the air will turn the Earth into the greatest place to live that could possibly be imagined. You can't make Eden with just one thing, because building paradise would take getting a lot of things right. So there's really not much chance that we get wonderful, no problems, great benefits, just from cranking up CO2. But there's a slight chance that we actually make the tropics too hot to live in for unprotected peaceful, that we could have dead zones belching out poison gas, that we could shut down the North Atlantic and dry out the monsoon belts, that we could dump an ice sheet in the ocean and flood the coasts in a hurry. These are all considered to be very unlikely at this point, but we can't rule them out. And CO2 might by itself do that. And so if you look at the picture, yes, it could be a little better, it could be a little worse, it could be a lot worse, but we don't see any way to make it a lot better. Now, this is an opinion, but the, the last times that I have sort of talked to high policy makers about this, that I've testified to Congress or what have you, my impression is that we spent a lot of time having this argument. I present what we know best from the science, and someone says, it could be better. This is our best estimate, it could be better. This is our best estimate, this could be better. Yes, that is not both sides. Be very clear. The best scientific evidence versus don't worry is not showing you both sides. And if 
we scientists are wrong, it's more likely to be on the bad side than it is on the good side.